question. Now, when can we reopen parts of our state's economy? That question is no easy answer. As one Indiana congressman discovered this week, it can also be a pretty controversial topic. I spoke with Congressman Trey Hollingsworth, who made national news this week for some controversial remarks he made calling the risk of coronavirus the lesser of two evils compared to the economic risks. Do you regret what you said about the loss of life being the, quote, lesser of two evils? Look, I think when you look at the entirety of my statement, what, what I was trying to convey is ultimately we have to recognize that there is economic costs. I'm hearing from Hoosiers every single day that are worried about feeding their families in the future. There's real freedom costs. I'm hearing from anxious Hoosiers that feel like we can no longer go to church anymore. We have to recognize that there is real risk and cost to our way of life as Americans. And I think we need to be adults in this room and say the coronavirus risk will never be equal to zero. And we have got to find a way through epidemiology and economics to minimize both the economic cost and the biological risk at the same time. That's what I've been a fan of. That's what I've been an advocate of. We cannot continue to tell people, shelter in place, stay in your home forever. We need a phase two and a better plan for how we deal and mitigate with these risks going forward. Do you wish you'd said it differently? Did it come out the wrong way? Look, ultimately, we have got to get across to the American people that there is not going to be a moment in Indianapolis in a month when somebody blows a whistle and says, that's all gone, it's passed. We will live with this coronavirus risk being non-zero for a long time to come. And I want to make sure that we also have an economy that empowers Americans to find opportunity, that enables them to feed their families, that enables them to be able to educate their children, that enables them to be able to go to church. And we have got to weigh those costs against the biological risks as well and ensure that policymakers offer Americans a better answer than just stay at home and hope this goes away. Randy Schmidt, who's the president of the Indiana Alliance for Retired Americans Educational Fund, called your remarks, quote, outrageous and dangerous and said you're willing to sacrifice the most vulnerable Hoosiers, including seniors and essential workers, so wealthy corporations can go back to making record profits in his words he said your callous cruelty must stop end quote what's your response to randy and his group the indiana alliance for retired americans you know, randy should reach out and talk to some of the hoosiers all the way across the district that are really and genuinely hurting they have trouble feeding their families that are having trouble getting their businesses through this difficult time after they've invested their life savings in that that are having trouble understanding why they can't help educate their children, why they can't go to church. And he needs to understand that there is real costs attached to this. And I have been a strong advocate from day one of making sure we protect those that are most susceptible to this disease. But we also have to ensure that we enable our way of life to continue, knowing that it, the risk is never going to be zero. We will live with this for a very long time, and we have to ensure that we develop a plan You've taken a lot of heat, though, for those comments. Are, are you surprised at the reaction to your interview with WIBC? I'm not surprised. I continue to talk about how we must elevate the conversation beyond the two corner solutions of you have to stay in your home and accept that your job won't be there in the future or you go out and die. We owe Americans a better solution than just those two corner solutions. And I think with the best of epidemiology, the best of economics, this country is best suited to develop that pathway forward to return to as much of our way of life that we value as we can. All right, Congressman Trey Hollingsworth in an interview with me earlier this week. Late this week, we also heard from both of Indiana's senators, Todd Young and Mike Braun, on this topic of reopening the economy and the debate over who has the authority to make that move. Well, obviously, I, I want our public health officials uh, to strongly inform any policy responses. And uh, I've been gratified that here at the state level that has been the case. The president also has uh, Dr. Burks and Dr. Fauci in particular out front. And, and, and so that's, that's uh, imperative. But I also want to make sure that uh, we factor into our overall uh, calculations, uh, the, the impact that a down economy can have on people's health. I think it's important for governors, even that generally don't like the president's point of view or don't like his uh, approach towards things. I think he's got it right on this one, that uh, each state will be a little different. Uh, this will actually be implemented by the governors. Uh, so 
he'll need to be working with them to try to do what he's wanting them to do. And he needs to respect their knowledge of the lay of the land in terms of how this is going to unfold in the trenches. All right. In recent days, we also caught up with Congressman Larry Bouchon and Andre Carson, who spoke with our D.C. correspondent Trevor Shirley. We've seen kind of how the states, uh, to a certain extent, have been forced essentially to bid against one, of, one another for equipment, supplies. Do you feel like Indiana and Indianapolis specifically is getting what it needs to hopefully stave off uh, that classification of an emergent hotspot? We've been working with Governor Holcomb and his team. And we've been working with the mayors and state and local officials as, as a congressional delegation to see to it that their needs are met. Uh, it's an ongoing struggle, but I think that, you know, Indiana is one of those states where, where while we have partisan differences, we still come together as Hoosiers at the end of the day. Are you concerned about the possibility of opening things back up too soon? We've seen that in other countries where they've done that, and then there's been another wave in terms of cases. Yeah, I don't think there's a right answer to the question, honestly, from a medical standpoint. Uh, it's, a very, it's a very difficult thing to assess. You know, we're seeing this week that some of the modeling is continually changing, downgrading the number of deaths expected, for example. And that's because they're relying on data, and that's all we have, right? And that's what you have to rely on. Whatever a model is put in place, of course, whatever you put in is what comes out the other end. So, you know, everybody's working in good faith to try to make sure that the models are correct and the estimates are correct. But at the end of the day, things like what happens in the state of New York and how that works out in New Jersey is really going to help us understand the possibilities in the rest of the country.